All right, sunscreen or no sunscreen? I am not putting this out there as any kind of expert. I do have over 20 years of studying skincare and health in general. I do have a degree in health science, but that really has nothing to do with anything. I just mention it because I did uh, spend some time in college actually studying anatomy, physiology, um, health in general. And even though pretty much everything I learned is not super accurate, aside from the fact that some of it was very accurate, some of the things I still remember to this day, and some of the things that I learned make me realize how pathetic some people are that have medical degrees next to their name and were promoting a certain you-know-what, something that actually alters the way our biology naturally and normally functions, having to do with three little letters. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of alarming that these people are in the positions that they are in when they don't even remember basic biology and what those three little letters actually do and why you might want to think long and hard before you let somebody mess with yours. But that's a different video for a different time. So when it comes to sunscreen, what I want people to think about is that many of us live in climates and live in areas that our ancestors didn't, okay? So for those of us that have light skin and find ourselves living in areas where it gets real hot, and even if it's just in the summer, you know, maybe you don't live south or maybe, you know, you live where it's more temperate or what have you. If there's hot summers and you have very light skin, then you're going to need to protect your skin if you spend any good amount of time outside. It's just the way it is. Now, when you think about it, so I live in the United States, East Coast, New England. The indigenous people that lived here before colonization had dark skin. Okay? So my ancestors came from somewhere more north where they didn't get as much sun and therefore are not adapted with dark skin. I can tan. I can actually get really dark. But I'm not naturally dark, which means I do not have that natural protection from the rays of the sun. Okay, what I found really interesting is years ago when I was studying a lot about this topic, they did studies and found that when people from Africa came to the United States, they had more skin cancer, which is really interesting. Why are they not having it so much there, but they're coming here and getting so much skin cancer? Could it be all the pollution? the change in the quality of the food, because we know that there's not a lot of real food here. Most of the stuff that people eat is not food, which means it's not going to nourish our skin the way our skin needs to be nourished. Not to mention the fact that most people put all sorts of man-made synthetic chemicals on their skin all the time all the time. Commercial soaps are toxic, commercial shampoos are toxic. All the stuff people put on their skin, their armpits, their face, their hair. So not only are we ingesting poison every day, we're putting it on our skin in some form or another. The chemicals that come out of the water when you're taking a shower or washing your face how do all of these chemicals affect 
the health of our skin. All of the seed oils that people eat. Again, it drastically changes the composition of our sebum and our natural biome on our skin. So there are so many things that come into play. How well are we able to repair after getting UV exposure? Because that's what it boils down to. Okay, the human body is always going through a process of breakdown of old, diseased, dying cells and being remade, rebuilt. Okay, you've got anabolism and catabolism. And so when you get UV exposure, it does cause some damage to some of the cells that our body goes in and repairs and cleans up. And if that process isn't done easily and effectively, it's going to cause some damage. So it's not a black or white conversation. What it boils down to is how do we protect our skin from excessive sun exposure without poisoning ourselves and causing cancer in other parts of our body. But there's many things that cause skin cancer. It's not just the sun. It's not the sun that causes the cancer. It's our skin's inability to heal and repair after exposure. Okay? Humans have lived in the sun for a long time. But people that lived where there was a lot of sun exposure naturally had dark skin. And ancient cultures used a lot of animal fats on their skin. I remember reading an article about the indigenous people, Native American indigenous people would use beef fat and fat from other animals. Bear fat was one of them. Bear fat, bear fat and, and uh, not beef fat, I'm sorry, bison. Um, but they would use animal fats on their skin. We know that the Polynesian love coconut oil and, you know, people in other parts of the world use different oils on their skin. But again, they have dark skin. So applying these oils that have a little bit of sun protection is probably more than enough for them. But it may not be enough for someone with really, really light skin who lives where it's really hot and has a lot of sun exposure. So my ancestors probably came from somewhere where there wasn't as much sun exposure. Maybe it was cloudier or a little rainier or just more north so the rays were not as strong. So it's a really big area and we need to, to really think critically, okay? So again, You've got the options of a wide-brimmed hat, linen clothing, cover your skin up. I like the really clean mineral powders on my face. I absolutely need to wear sunscreen if I am going to be at the beach or if I'm going to be out in the hot sun all day, if I'm out kayaking or I have to. I, I absolutely have to or my face will burn like a lobster. I have hypersensitive skin, especially since I had the frostbite. So I absolutely have to use something, but I will not use chemical sunscreens. Absolutely won't use them. So again, it's, it's really just being mindful and doing what your body needs you to do to protect it. So on another note, what I wanted to mention is that there are stories out there of people that have had lots of skin damage from excessive sun exposure. And I've heard of some pretty amazing healings with aromatherapy using really good quality essential oils. And some have had some great results with uh, some of the plant oils, which I'm not quite as big of a fan. But the healings with the tallow and the animal fats are unbelievable. Unbelievable. 
that people are healing skin damage using animal fats. The combination of the animal fats with the essential oils in the right amounts, the right concentration, and the right oils can be pretty incredible. But again, you don't want to be putting essential oils on your skin and then going out in the sun. So these are best to use at night or when you're not going to be getting any kind of excessive sun exposure. But the oils in and of themselves are good to use all the time. Now, how much sun protection are these oils going to give you? That I don't know. And it's probably different from person to person. So when I need a little sun protection, I use a little bit of the clean mineral powders with like four ingredients. I will put a little bit of that on my face, my neck or wherever I need to cover up. And then I'm going to cover up with, with linen clothing. And if I need to, I'm going to wear a nice big hat. So again, it's a lot of information out there. So just be mindful. Um, you know, yes, we do need sun. We need it to synthesize vitamin D3. We need it for melatonin regulation and production. We need it for hundreds of thousands of different metabolic and biological processes that go on in our body. We need it for hormone regulation. We need it for all sorts of things. It's absolutely vital. We need to get unadulterated sun in through our eyes as well. So you don't want to be wearing sunglasses all the time. But again, there is a time and a place for all of it. Okay, you just have to be mindful and decide what method do you want to use if you need to protect your skin from the sun. Instead of saying nobody needs to wear sunscreen. Okay, just got to be mindful. But your sunscreen could be a wide brimmed hat. I mean, it's not a sunscreen, but it is sun protection. It does protect your face from getting the direct rays of the sun. And that's what they do in China, parts of Asia, and in other parts of the world. They would wear big hats. But again, even people in Asia some of those people do have darker skin. Again, it really just depends, but, you know, those of us with ancestors from the north need to be careful if we live where there's a lot of hot sun, okay? Signing out.